Good morning. Welcome to worship on the, this, the first Sunday of the Christmas season. Uh, before we begin our worship this morning, I do want to take a moment to uh, share with you just a couple of end-of-the-year thoughts. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone who put so much effort into making this Christmas season uh, festive and joyous despite all of the obstacles that we faced. Uh, so many people came forward uh, to help us out, to decorate the sanctuary, to decorate outdoors, uh, to make sure that everything was done, to put worship together, uh, and to make sure everything was, was done so that uh, even, even with everything that was happening, we would have a joyous uh, and festive celebration of the Nativity of our Lord. I also want to thank all of the folks who volunteered uh, throughout the entire year uh, to keep all of our programs going. Again, we had a number of obstacles in the way, but uh, with the help of so many people, uh, all of them were cleared, and we had so many good programs during the course of this year that uh, here at year's end we can celebrate, indeed, that the Lord has blessed us. As we look forward to the new year, uh, we, we do have a new air purification system installed here. Uh, Throughout all of the buildings uh, that that uh, we that we have, and so uh, beginning next week, uh, we will have in-person worship again, and so uh, it would be wise to watch your email this week. And uh, announcements about the time uh, will be put out early in the week. Also, this coming week, uh, a a new organist will be joining us. So uh, I won't. I won't release too many details about that as yet either, but uh, there will be cause for celebration, I'm sure, uh, when you hear, hear him play. Aside from those things, I want to take this moment to, on behalf of our church staff, uh, to, to again wish you all a very Merry Christmas and, of course, a Happy New Year uh, at this coming week's end. Those things being said, let us just take a moment to collect ourselves as we begin our worship together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins those we know, and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Hymn number 288 for those of you at home with hymnals. Good Christian friends rejoice with hearts and souls. Christ was born forevermore. Christ was 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Come, let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove. The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love The Lord be with you And also with you Let us pray Almighty God, You wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings of your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Lift up your hearts and hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. 
This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was necessary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings to all of you on this, the first Sunday of the Christmas season. It is good that you are worshiping with us, and we are glad that you are taking this time out of your day to pray, to praise, and to be blessed by God's holy word. They had waited, Simeon and Anna. They had waited their whole lives for a glimpse of the Messiah. And Simeon had been promised that he would not see death before he saw the Lord. And Anna faithfully went to worship each and every day, praying and praising in the temple, we are told, both night and day. It was for each of these people a long advent their whole lives. But I suspect that it only made Jesus coming to the temple all the more sweet when he was finally revealed to them. Simeon was hoping for just a look, just a word. Yet when Jesus came into the temple, he saw in Jesus' face the salvation not only of Israel, but the salvation of the whole world, a light and a joy to all the nations. And Simeon was so moved by what he saw, so overwhelmed, that in his old age, he thanked God and declared that now he could go. Now he could die in peace, knowing that God's promise had been fulfilled. By his own words, he didn't need to see any more, didn't need to participate any further. In Jesus' own face, he saw what the future held, even though he could only see the beginning. 
It's been 2,020 years since Simeon and Anna looked upon the face of Jesus the Christ. But still we are at the beginning of the story of the Incarnation. For the story of salvation goes on and on as you and I, like Simeon and Anna before us, share the good news of God in Jesus Christ. You know, the question has been raised, what's in a name? The angel said to Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. And so on this, the eighth day, when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple to do for him according to the law, They named him Jesus. But you and I know that while his name is Jesus, he had received many names before he came to the temple, and since then he has received many more. And we know so many. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Son of David, Son of Man, Lion of Judah, Bright Morning Star, Messiah, Redeemer, Savior, Lord, Teacher, Healer, Word of God, the Incarnate Son, Word made flesh, Bringer of Salvation, Mary's Boy, Child, Light of the World, the light that shines in the darkness, the light that no darkness has overcome. Many names, many names. But maybe the most important thing about the naming of Jesus is that in Jesus' naming, we all receive another name. We all receive a holy name because alongside whatever name we were given in our baptism, we have this other name, child of God, sister of Christ, sibling of Christ, brother of Christ, disciple of Christ, redeemed of Christ, the forgiven of Christ, the apostles of Christ, the restored of Christ, the illuminated of Christ, the baptized of Christ, the saved of Christ, and again, so many more. In Jesus' naming, we are all named children of God, names that we could never rest for ourselves, but names that are given to us by Jesus as free gift, the foreseeing of which caused Simeon to know that he could depart this world in peace, and Anna to leave the temple, praising God for all that she had seen. But they're seeing the face of Jesus and our own being named in the naming of Jesus, again, is only part of a great and wonderful story because the salvation story continues to unfold as we, the apostles and disciples of Christ, continue to share the story of salvation with each new generation and with each new person we meet. We have been named, and as Anna before us, we leave the temple, we leave the confines of our homes, we leave the confines of this holy space, and we share with the world as best we can and with the gifts we have, the wonder of God's love incarnate in our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding guard our hearts and keep our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our worship continues with the hymn of the day. Thank you.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe I in Jesus Christ, Christ God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third, third day he rose again. again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the songs of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O oh God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. We commend into your care Abigail, Sharon, Michael, Olivia, Frank, Susan, Eleanor, Diane, John, Jean, Ed, Bill, Anne-Marie, Alexandria, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Eric, Lori, David, Anthony, Maureen, Bob, Grace, Tom, James, Elaine, Casey, Jacqueline, Allison, Ken, Elsa, Sharon, Vicki, Sandy, Kristen, Linda, Elsa, Larry, and those we name in our hearts. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend into loving and eternal care, O God, our brother in Christ, Frank Moore. As you have received him into your kingdom, we pray that you would be with Ellie and her family as they mourn his passing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For John, apostle and evangelist, and all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit as the body of Christ, we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. for his 
Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.